how many people here have purchased an item of clothing in the last two years? Now keep your hand up if you know which country this product was produced in. Keep your hand up if you know the legal labour requirements in those countries. And keep your hand up if you know exactly the conditions that that product was made. Not many. So this is a problem because most of us wear clothing, but very few of us know where or how those products are actually made. You might not know that in Bangladesh, the legal labour rate is $68 per month. You might not know that the Aral Sea has been completely decimated as a result of over-irrigation for cotton farming. Or that there's actually a saying that you can tell what the it colour of the season will be by the colour of the waterways. Tina tato te whanau, ko Samantha Jones tau I'm one of the EHF Kiwi Fellows from Cohort 1, and I'm in the business of transforming the garment industry. I do this through a business which manufactures ethically made corporate apparel and sells them to individuals as well online. But what's different about our business is that I can tell you where that cotton has been grown, how it was picked, where it was ginned, spun, knitted or woven, dyed and manufactured. Since joining the EHF, we have had significant growth, more than doubling our revenue in the last 12 months. We supply to businesses from universities in New Zealand through to building companies in the US and 400 other businesses like these. But since joining the EAF, EHF, we've become more focused on how we can measure our impact. And in March of this year, we released our first annual impact report which was widely distributed throughout New Zealand and overseas, which measured three key things. And what we found was that we had actually saved more than 12 million litres of water by simply choosing to source organic rain-fed cotton. We've also focused more on the educational side of what we're doing. And what started out as a post-it note in open space one year ago became what I believe was one of New Zealand's best ethical fashion events, which brought together 10 industry experts <laughs> and a sold out crowd of more than 200 people here in Wellington, something we hope to scale up next year. But probably the most significant thing I've learned is that one person and one business is not gonna change the world at the rate that we so desperately need. And so what can I do outside just my business and the fashion industry? How this has emerged was that we were fortunate enough to receive more than a million dollars in overseas grant funding to develop a supply chain tracking system. And what this looks like in our business is that from next year, all of our products will have QR codes embedded into the wash care labels. And our customers will be able to track the batch information and all of the information around where and how those products were made. But I want this to go beyond my company because I think that this should not be the exception. It should be the expectation. 12 months ago, uh, we were moving into our very first office space. We had very much overstayed our welcome as a product company in a co-working space. And to be honest, I was not sure exactly how we would afford uh, to operate in our new space for ourselves. But today we've not only survived, We've actually grown, and at the end of this month, we are moving into a new warehouse space in Lao Bay. More than that, we have reached what I think is a significant milestone for any early stage company, which has been to bootstrap our way to our first million dollars in revenue. If you'd like to join us on this journey or help in transforming the garment industry, then I would love to connect with you. Noreira, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou katoa.